Good afternoon. Philippians 2, 5 through 8, establish the deity of Jesus Christ. Uh, many people try to dissect this uh, to divert people from the actual truth that he is God. And he subsisted and eternally subsists as God, added to himself in the first century humanity. Let's go take a look. Here's the first page of the website. Go to the letter P for Philippians. Got a study on that. Philippians 2. Let's go to chapter 2. Scroll on down to 5 through 8. 5 through 6a, rather, first. Philippians 2, 5 through 6a. Let this mind be in you, which also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it, it robbery to be equal with God, who, although he existed in the sense of subsisted, in the form of God, did not re Guard equality with God a thing to be grasped. Interesting. The Greek phrase rendered, who being existed, subsisted in the form of God, refers to the continual existence of Christ Jesus as God, almighty, eternal, immutable, and holy, an eternal existence that cannot cease or die for the sins of mankind, as some contend, or change in any way since God is immutable. The answer, people don't realize, is that the humanity, the perfect humanity that Christ added to himself, being God, added to himself in the first century, his humanity died on the cross. His deity cannot die. It's immutable. So, Philippians 2.6 who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. The Greek word rendered form in Philippians 2.6 in the phrase rendered, who being existed, subsisted in the form of God, refers to the external form, the appearance by which a person or thing strikes the vision, an external form but which is intrinsically indicative of the inner nature from which it springs, a continual eternal existence of Christ Jesus as God. Almighty, eternal, immutable, and holy, especially because of the words rendered equal, equality with God. That's in verse 6. Note that Christ Jesus' addition to himself of perfect humanity, which will continue forever, is in view in the next two verses. Now, in Philippians 2, 6 through 8, take a look at those verses first. Who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant, and coming in the likeness of men. But emptying himself, taking the form of a bondservant, and being made in the likeness of men. Notice likeness. He wasn't sinful, but he was like man, he had the external appearance of a man, but he had perfect, uh, perfect form. He was a perfect man, sinless. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, to the point of death, even the death of the cross. So here's our summary on that. Christ Jesus being existed, subsisted in the form of God, almighty, eternal, immutable, and holy, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God in the sense of regarding it as a thing to be grasped or held on to. He willingly emptied himself of the outward expression of his deity, did not give it up. He's immutable, he's God, making himself of no reputation by taking the form of a bondservant in the appearance of a man, by coming in the likeness of men. 
in the sense of voluntarily setting aside, deferring his expression as God to the humanity he added to himself in the form and expression of perfect humanity. It wasn't sinful. So he exclusively expressed his humanity during his humanity's ministry on earth from the conception and birth of his humanity until his humanity's death on the cross, with the exception of his transfiguration. The perfect humanity of Christ is referred to by some, by the name Jesus, and when the Christ, the Son of God, took upon himself the form and expression of perfect humanity, he did it in order to pay the penalty for the sins of the whole world. Only the form and expression of Christ Jesus' as humanity could have participated in his sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. For God's holiness cannot be tainted with the guilt of humanity, hence he had perfect humanity. You couldn't have sinful humanity in a, a union with being the Son of God, deity, nor can Christ Jesus' his essence as God die or change in any way because God is immutable. There's a full detailed explanation of that. Now we can move on to Philippians 2, 7 through 8a. Take a look at that. But made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men, but emptying himself, taking the form of a bondservant and being in the likeness of men. That's the NASB, New King James Version, very similar. And to eight, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of a cross. So let's take a look at the summary of this. So Philippians 2, 7b states that Christ Jesus took on the external, internal form of a bondservant, humanity. And Philippians 2, 7c states that he came in the likeness, the external form of men, and the Greek is there as transferred as a bond servant, translated as humanity. And in Philippians 2a, it states that Christ Jesus was found in the appearance, the outward form. In the Greek, it's shemati of man. Since Christ is Jesus is God, and since his internal nature in his humanity cannot be like that of sinful man, then Christ's humanity must be perfect without a sin nature. So although he came in the likeness, i.e. he was found in the outward appearance of a man, he could not take upon himself the internal contaminated form, the sinful form of man, but the internal form of a perfect man, sinless, from conception. So I think we've covered that adequately to read the detailed explanation because you're going to be, uh, when you share your faith with others, you're going to be dealing with this passage a lot.